But how Hunter chilling to do? This year the Queen quite coming and Hunter for this year Gullah Geechee TV Nation News. Now plenty of Hunter children might don't know, but this year here, the, the 20th year since the Declaration for the Rights Belonging to Persons of Linguistic, Ethnic, National, Religious, Minorities and things like that. Now plenty of Hunter children that know say the Gullah Geechee Nation stand for the right to self-determination, what a human right, by not know say this year declaration the one ply that we took, because we the national minority, we are an ethnic minority and a linguistic minority, as Hunter can hear me the crack my teeth right now. Well, I'm so glad that this year here bring me the same weekend what been the Earth Day weekend to this year conference where Hunter go I see. He called from civil rights to human rights to self-determination by the International Human Rights Association of American Minorities, IRAM, what me they upon the director of so when Hunter the tune in this episode, Hunter going to get him with the crack we teeth. But well, what truly civil rights do for the black people, whatever they do for the black people, and whether or not the children are going toward self-determination, and how Hunter can stand with we through all of this year. So we thought it not robbery for celebrate this year 20th anniversary of the declaration that the day about we people and the other rest of people in the world that fit in them group, but rather was to keep on working toward self-determination. And Hunter children know if you did with me, that will be the guy. And truly, this year, the work going on. You'll notice on the, on the uh, Stand, podium. Oh, yeah. podium. Thank you. I know that's right. Uh, the reason I'm calling your attention to it is just like in, in terms of if President Obama was here, there'd be the presidential seat. We've been blessed this, this afternoon uh, to have a head of state, a head of state of a, a nation significant to us as African Americans. And that's the, the head of state of the Gullah Geechee Nation. <coughs> Queen Quet is a published author, computer scientist, lecturer, mathematician, historian, columnist, preservationist, film consultant, and artist. She is the founder of the premier advocacy organization for the continuation of the Gullah Geechee culture, the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition. Queen Quet has not only provided historical historical musical presentations throughout the world, but was also the first Gullah Geechee uh, person to speak on behalf of her people before the United Nations in Geneva, Switzerland. Queen Quet was one of the first of seven inductees to the, the Gullah Geechee Nation Hall of Fame. She received the Anointed Spirit Award for her leadership and for being a visionary. In 2008, she was recorded at UNESCO headquarters in Paris, France at a United Nations conference in order to have the human rights story of the Gullah Geechee people archived for the United Nations. Mm -hmm. In 2009, she was invited by the Office of the High Commissioner of the United Nations to come and present before the newly founded Minority Forum as a representative of the Gullah Geechee Nation and of Imran. For the, which is an NGO in consultant stance with the United Nations. Queen Quet is a director, member of IHRAM and for the International Commission on Human Rights. She represented these bodies and the Gullah Geechee Nation at the United Nations Forum on Minority Rights. Queen Quet has won countless awards for being a woman of distinction for her scholarship, writings, artistic presentation, activism, cultural continuation, and environmental preservation. Her accolades include the United States Jefferson Award for Community Service, the Jean and Laney Folk Heritage Award for Gula Advocacy from the State of Carolina, the inaugural Hotep Award, the inaugural Mavini Betch, several Queen and several Queen Quet Days and uh, Gula Geechee Days pro pro proclaimed not only in the state of uh, uh, South Carolina, but other states in the United States. The General Assembly of South Carolina has also honored Queen Quet with Resolution 1453 for the work that she has done on behalf of her home state and the Gullah Geechee people, locally, nationally, and internationally. Queen Quet was selected 
elected and installed by her people to be the first queen mother and official spokesperson for the Gula Geechee Nation. As a result, she is respectfully referred to as Queen Quet, Chiefess of the Gula Geechee Nation and Head of State, and as protocol calls, I would ask that you all stand as we welcome our next <coughs>
if it is agreed that, quote, culture is the highest social and historical expression of the every means of the highest expression of spiritual development, end quote. And that man has a duty to preserve, practice, and foster culture by every means within its power, then Gullahichis have the right to do that like any other culture people. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So something that I recently wrote in terms of a case we currently have, and then for the paper for this conference that y'all can read later on. I never like to come to something to read to go on for. I feel like you ought to know how to read. <laughs> All right? But I just want to read some of the quotes from it because as a directorate member for ELAM, the reason we thought it was critical to have a conference like this is so that you understand we're not just another group. We're not just another organization. We're not just another NGO. In fact, it's very critical, and I was very glad you called and went back to say it. We're an NGO with consultative status with the UN, which is different than the thousands to tens of thousands of NGOs that probably exist. And it is critical to this effort that we've been talking about for these two days. So as you understand, Islam is here as an organization to provide support and to provide the education to create the atmosphere that my brother just spoke about where there is already a knowledge base of human rights. And I always tell people, I got my education in human rights from baptism by fire. Because I was sent to the UN, as I mentioned to y'all, with no instruction other than go and be well. Here's your ticket. <laughs> and that was it. Well, OK, when I get there, where do I go? Uh, we'll have people pick you up. These brothers had a sign, and I came out. I was like, it's me, my greeting system. I said, I'm like, come with us. Got in the car, they said like maybe 10 words. Got to the hotel, they checked me in at the desk. They made sure I was safe in the room. said, all right, have a good rest. And they left. And I didn't see these people again until the next day. And they came and they said, they called first. They said, we just want to make your, show you up. We'll pick you up in an hour, and we'll take you over. You get your ID, and you'll go to the UN. And the coastal incident was going on. So there were armed guards everywhere. And the first morning, I went in by car. The next morning, I done figured this out. I said, oh, I'm on my own. I get it. I'm going to figure out how I get in out of this place on my own. And I did that. But here me, gully get you down, walking up to these people in the morning. Good morning. How you feel? <laughs> Man standing here with guns looking like, is she talking to us? <laughs> like nobody talks to us, right? A couple of nod. By the next day when I showed up, they were used to me. Everybody else went by. I'm like, good morning. Were, good morning. <laughs> you know, like that. But that's my culture. It is who I am no matter where I go. But now, what I went to get was something I had to bring back home, just like I had taken home out where I had gone. And so over my years of learning, there was no cheat sheet. Dr. Clyde was saying, hey, read this. And then he'd call and say, what did you think of what I asked you to read? And now I need to present to him what I saw. And I thought, we just having a conversation. And at the end, he was like, very good. And I said, oh, I get it now. I'm, the, I'm a student. Now I'm being tested. <laughs> so I think today he would be proud to know that I continue reading without him having to send material anymore. Mm. And so, just so happens, I think that's why in 1740, when the slave codes came into existence after the 1739 Stone Rebellion took place in the Gullah Geechee Nation, yeah. one of the first components thereof was that no Negroes were to read or write. Right. No Negroes were to own land. Mm -hmm. No three or more Negroes were to gather without an overseer present. That is why I'm very clear to y'all the difference between an overseer and a driver. Okay, a driver could have been there. An overseer couldn't because the driver was still looking like you. The overseer wasn't. All right? And no drums were to be played. Mm. So I see y'all have kept with that restriction at this conference. I haven't heard a drum yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that reading thing, y'all breaking the law. <laughs> It has not been rescinded. So here it is. As I read, I read the words I just shared with you all. And I said, isn't that interesting? 
And here it is, I further read and said this. The lack of access to land and natural resources can reduce conditions of extreme poverty for the affected indigenous communities, given that the lack of possession of mm -hmm. and access to mm -hmm. their territories prevents them from using and enjoying the natural resources that they need to obtain the goods necessary for their subsistence. Mm -hmm. You know where we come from. Mm -hmm. All right. Develop their traditional cultivation, okay? Hunting, fishing, or gathering access. Accessing traditional health systems, my sister. Mm -hmm. And other key socio-cultural functions. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the lack of access to ancestral territories and the lack of state action in this regard, exposes indigenous and tribal people to precarious or subhuman living conditions in the fields of access to food, water, mm -hmm. dignified housing, basic utilities and health, and consequently bear an impact into Alia upon higher rates of, here we go my sister, child mm -hmm. and infant mortality, and malnutrition, mm -hmm. higher vulnerability to illness and epidemics. And based on my brother's presentation, I would think you just described an epidemic mm -hmm. of violence mm -hmm. against people in our own community at the hands who say they come to serve and protect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I continue. To that extent, the state's lack of guarantee of indigenous and tribal people's right to live in their ancestral territory may imply subjecting them to situations of extreme unprotectedness, mm -hmm. which entails violations of their rights to life, to personal integrity, to a dignified existence. Notice not just an existence, to a dignified existence, to, again, food, to water, to health, to education, and children's rights, among others. In addition, disregard for the rights of members of indigenous communities over their ancestral territories can affect for the same causes other basic rights, such as the right to cultural identity, the collective right to cultural integrity, or the right to collective survival of communities and their members. The extreme living conditions borne by the members of the indigenous communities that lack access to the ancestral territory can cause them to suffer and undermine the preservation of their way of life, customs, and language. Mm -hmm. Now, Hunter Chilla know when they correct me, yeah, the language that be on for me, right? <laughs> okay. Because one of the main things that's been undermined for Gullah Geechee's has been our language. Mm -hmm because our language is, as we put in the Gullah Geechee Nation Constitution, a code of the spirit. That code of the spirit has been used as a mechanism of survival. Mm -hmm. Our ability to code switch within different environments has been a mechanism of survival. Mm -hmm. So the very way in which, and this brother and I, brother Short and I shared some things yesterday, both positive and painful at the same time, in regard to our Gullah Geechee ancestry, our Gullah Geechee story, our Gullah Geechee roots, in regard to the fact that the very denigration of our people often took place because people could identify them through their language. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely true. People were killed because of their language. People were denied jobs because of their language. There is no connection between intellect or IQ and language. But nonetheless, that has been utilized against our people. Mm -hmm. And now when we start to talk about things like African American vernacular English, people utilize Gullah as a basis for understanding that is the very grandparent or foreparent to all the other things that black folks speak. Y'all know if I walked in this room and went, Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all know what, what's up? Mm -hmm. How y'all doing? Mm -hmm. Alright? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. 
right? Mm -hmm. I walk up to the front and go, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know what that is. Mm -hmm. By saying, target, if I walked up in here and went, <laughs> y'all know what that means. Mm -hmm. Before I even got to this part, y'all mm -hmm. was like, oh, glad she ain't looking at me. That brother's back there looks like, they like <laughs> all right, the song getting low, we ain't even playing. All right. <laughs> but now, there is a dynamic to someone trying to take from you your language. That's right. Yeah, that sure is. Hence the taking of the drum. Mm -hmm. All right, part of the language. But now, this that I read to you, as you heard, they continue to discuss this in the context of indigenous peoples. And we know that with the myriad of us in this room, these definitions and these terminologies change from place to place. What the US calls indigenous, the UN calls a different definition of indigenous, depending on what dictionary you use, indigenous is defined differently and so on and so forth. All right, but we're not gonna deal with that part. But it comes from a case that they did actually about the Maya indigenous communities and someone in the U.S. sued. And again, to me, we could replace the word indigenous with black and it kind of still applies, huh? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So the thing for Gullah Geechee's though was the fact that amongst the group often called black, we always still stood out because of the way we talk because of the rice we ate, and still eat breakfast, mm -hmm. lunch, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. snack. <laughs> All right, folks were single us out. Well, who y'all? I heard of y'all people, right? All that kind of stuff. But they didn't necessarily mean in a way so they could embrace you. Many times they want to check, make sure that's who you think, and then they would mm -hmm. push you aside. And these were other black people mm -hmm. doing that. So here it is that the Gullah Geechees and our fight to no longer be displaced were not getting assistance from other brothers and sisters because they had been taught we ain't the same. We don't deal with them Geechees out on the island. Anybody here seen a soldier story? Mm -hmm. yes. Anybody old as me remember it was a soldier's play? Mm -hmm. yes. All right, off Broadway. Mm -hmm. I saw them both. One of my favorite films was one of the most painful films I've ever had to watch in my life because the brother said the day of the Geechee is gone. And to every Gullah Geechee I can mention that movie too, we remember the line as the day of the Geechee is dead. dead. Mm -hmm. And when I went back and watched it and heard him say gone, I said, when they put gone in there, because I sure don't remember this day. Right. That, that wasn't one of Denzel's lines, but... No, that no, was, that was, line that was Sarge. Adolf Caesar. Mm -hmm. Caesar. Caesar. Mm -hmm. Caesar. That was his line. Sarge. Mm -hmm. All right? To CJ, who was the Geechee in the film. Mm -hmm. Who, just because he was Geechee, Sarge wanted to destroy. Right. Because he represented things to Sarge that Sarge was not. All right? And that Sarge also had been taught he could be better. Mm -hmm. And that we would have the whole next day tomorrow to deal with all of Sarge's issues and why he felt the way he felt. Mm -hmm. But he's a prime example of what Gullah Geechee versus every other group of black folks we had to contend with other than those who would come from the Caribbean Isles. And still do. Because they would always want to put us into their group. <laughs> yeah, we the crack teeth and say, oh, where are you from, by IR? Mm. No, but they're from the islands, which one? The sea islands, what kind of sea islands? Where does mm. thing there? We said, okay, in the United States of the Carolinas, the United States not have no islands. <laughs> you know, I can't stand people like you, because they're from my hierarchy, and I want nobody to know that. Mm. You know what the business? You know, arguments. People from Barbados swear we bar we beige. Mm -hmm. People from the Virgin Islands swear from the Virgin Islands. So they want to connect with us and keep us and our own family right here want to throw us away. And would leave, come up south, mm. all right, up south. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right, start going to what I call juke joint north, the bars, mm -hmm. all right, and then all of a sudden, they ain't got no money to send home. They ain't send no money for no tax. I ain't planning to live there anyway, like you said. Mm -hmm. I ain't left nothing in that dirt. 
These are direct quotes. Mm -hmm. It's too dark there. Mm -hmm. I ain't left nothing in them sticks. Who? I don't know. I don't know. We're past that now. Mm -hmm. You all are still digging around in that dirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 no, we don't do that anymore. So what do you do? How do you eat? Well, you get your food We go from, to the yeah. store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the same store next to the pharmacy that you go to, too, huh? Mm -hmm. You don't go to those. Mm -hmm. We ain't got those on our mm -hmm. Okay, so who all right? Okay. <laughs> but that assimilation that took place mm -hmm. for the wanting to be accepted, wanting to fit into the group, not wanting to stand out in any way, then caused our human and our true natural resource, the intellect, the physical bodies, the black gold as we have been written of, to be extracted out of the Gullah Geechee Nation and then be exploited by others in the North and in the West without any type of assistance coming back home. So now you had elders who couldn't afford to pay taxes as these newcomers came and moved in next door and now because they live next door and they put a multi-million dollar mansion here and your grand great grandmama's still in the house that she'd be kept in by the midwife and things like that, they ain't changed the knob, her land tax goes up. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. She changed nothing but the neighbors came. And yep. so now they don't want that old house next to them either, so they want to make this old lady awful. She ain't trying to hear this off of me, what, you better get off my land. Okay, they come back again. Okay, they can't get at her that way. Let me see who around the neighborhood in the area know her. Mm. And maybe they can go talk to this old lady and tell her she's better off with this kid some money than she is with that house. But them older folks wasn't going for that. They didn't know the children would. Mm. When they sent them up north to just get a job to do better for yourself so you can help family back home and then they got a pen and they lost their senses crossing the bridge. So here we were, the ones who still held the land, the ones who still growing food on the land, the ones who still living on the land, now not having to fight just an outside source that's coming in wanting to gate everything, wanting to make everything into a golf course. We do not eat those white balls that go into those holes in the ground, okay? And wanting to play tennis all the time. These so people had no regard for fishing hunting, sweet grass, herbal remedies, mm -hmm. none of these things, mm -hmm. and graveyards mm -hmm. that were all along this coastline that they wanted to put their clubhouses. So I ended up founding an organization called the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition that I thought was going to be a gathering place for all Gullah Geechees to immediately bring forth these issues and let us all work together to fight this as a collective body because we are stronger together than we are apart. I was the first person to ever put on the internet a site that had Gullah Geechee together in the name. Because before that, when I would type Gullah Geechee, they wouldn't even come together. Put in Gullah, you get five hits. Put in Geechee, you might have got Ted. And it was always an Anglo person's rendition of who we were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here it is now, I start teaching an online course on Nat Noir on Gullah Geechee, mm -hmm. probably the first one to exist in the world. Some brothers get in touch with me, they say, sister, would you like to start a listserv? Because we see that every day. You post something every day, you're sending out emails, we could help you to, to make this streamline this process, and that way a lot more people can get your emails every day. Sure, they sponsored that listserv for me for years for nothing because they wanted to support the cause. And here it was, more and more people start showing up to support that weren't even going to get you mm -hmm. until the day Dr. Clyde showed up. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was like, now it was like, here's some more Gullah Geechee's that are away from home, that are exiled in other places, that are saying, hello, that's what we've been waiting on, a structure that we can operate through together. 